blanket, it's Christmas. You're like, how'd that happen? Good morning. Happy Sabbath. We are live, and uh, we're so glad to be here with you. And Cliff is going to join me for our Sabbath morning live. <laughs> Thank you for uh, coming and worshiping in person, worshiping with us online. Um, we're excited to see you. We see online we have Howard Irby, we have uh, Winsome, and we have Vivine. So happy Sabbath to each of you. And who are you, sir? Good morning, it's, uh, Cliff Williams, the quiet, quiet man behind the scenes, but <laughs> I'm in front of the scenes right now. So <laughs> you are, in, and I'm Aubrey, by the way. I'm the pastor here. Sorry, I forgot to introduce myself. Um, Cliff was the quiet man behind the scenes previously doing what? Uh, ministry leader for the uh, multimedia whoop, whoop. ministry. You brought us through COVID, man. Praise the Lord for God using you. You, you brought us to where we are today. We now have uh, Ken and his wife, Nas. We met uh, Ken last week on Sabbath Morning Live. So Cliff isn't transitioning away. He's just transitioning to a different thing. So you're still going to help out with multimedia. You're still helping with that transition. But what is your, your new official title, if you will? Um, head deacon here at the church. Woo! Uh, yeah. Woo! Y'all don't understand how much of a blessing that is. We didn't have a head deacon for a couple of years. And, and we functioned, but we, didn't, we weren't thriving. And now Cliff is here, and we're like, Lord, you have brought us someone to help bring us to thrive. And we're excited. We're excited, so thank you, Cliff, for being willing. Yes, um, it's actually willing. Uh, is how would you say it in the right way? Um, sometimes your your mind is is maybe not be willing, your heart may not be willing, but your spirit is willing. There you go. And um, just after 26 years of service in the military, I'm not um, uh, scared of service, um, but in actuality. I've been doing probably, let's do the math, since I was five years old, so about 46 years of service in God's service, and to me, that is way more important. So um, serv serving God in any way possible, um, that's what I like to do. Amen, and we're excited to have you serving with us. Thank you for, for serving and being a part. All right, so we also have quite a few people in-house. I saw Donna and Basil, welcome. We have, is it Leland? Did I get your name right? He's in the house. We have Anne Marie and Patrick. Patrick, yeah. And we have, uh, oh, is it Ruby that I'm looking at? It's the Ravishing Ruby. And Beverly Russell and a beautiful family in the back who I can't see because lighting is rough. But hello, friends. Can't see who you are. But I'm going to see you later when we greet you at the door. <laughs> All right. Um, what are some of the announcements that we have? What's our first announcement up, Cliff? Uh, actually, it's the food pantry. Food pantry is um, something that is um, something that's needed. Something needed people. Um, people are hungry out there, and they need um, help. Um, I've been able to uh, sneak over here. Uh, it was a little running joke that me and uh, Violet had. I would tell my principal I had to take a, a bathroom break, and uh, <laughs> and I would come over here and help out with the uh, help them out for an hour. And I would make sure that while I was here, I would go to the bathroom <laughs> so I wouldn't be lying. So, um, uh, but it was just it's so good just to see the people, um, how much we bless the people um, with the food. So food pantry is something that we need because um, this is the time of the year to, for, for giving. So please help out with the food pantry. Amen. They're on Tuesdays as well as it, we need drivers. If you have a vehicle and are willing to drive, a larger vehicle, correction, it needs to have uh, some space in it that we can transport some food, or if you can drive our truck to pick up food, that would be a game changer. We really need help in that area as well. So hit us up, hit, uh, call the office, 770-469-0111. Talk to Violet, we'll get you on the schedule. It will be a huge help. And th thanks for that uh, bathroom break. Yes, Making sir. a difference, Cliff. Yeah, <laughs> anything, for, anything for the word of God. Love yes, it. Beautiful. And if you want to volunteer, if you want to be up here with me and host Sabbath Morning Live, because, you know, Cliff reluctantly said yes because he graciously, he graciously would uh, answer the call. But if you're like, you know what, I could do that. I could help out every now and then. I could help out on praise team. I could help out at check-ins. I could help out with kids. I don't know what your passion is. I don't know what you find joy in and what God has gifted you with, but I know that every single one of us in here has a gift. Right? Okay, there we go. And we can all serve and be a part. So let us know. We want to get you plugged in. Pew warming? Nah. 
we can't we can't keep doing that game anymore. We gotta serve. We gotta get up. We gotta be in the game, not just observing. Exactly. Can I say something with volunteer? I know a lot of times they say, uh, you have a lot of skills. You can do this. You can do that. Um, honestly, y'all, and Philip knows, um, I knew nothing about streaming. Um, I thought I was gonna be back there working on the uh, sound si sound system. He said we need somebody to help with the stream. And honestly, y'all, if you answer God's call, He will give you what you need. Amen. So don't worry about if you don't know how to do it. Yeah. You got to just put go out in faith because there's a lot of things that need to get done, and there's so many things that you may not know that you can do. So I w I would actually looking in the camera, which one right there? I am um, challenging you to go out in faith, and if God tells you to do it, go and do it. He'll make the way for you. Amen. Amen. Couldn't have said it better. We got a, we got a mini sermon right here on Sabbath Morning Live. Perfect. <laughs> All right. We also have our nursing home ministry. They've been going out on the second and third Sabbath. I believe this is the second Sabbath. If you want to be a part, they head over after church. Gloria Webster will be here shortly. I can connect you with her. Just let me know. We'd love for you to go and serve there. And if you want to be a part of our donation collection, we want you to be a part. We need you to be a part. We talked about that last week. Toothpaste, toothbrushes, socks, shampoo, conditioner, the two-in-one, uh, lotion. We don't want nobody ashy. So bring, bring these things. They will help. You don't have to bring all of them. Bring one. Even just one item will make a difference. So be a part. What do we got going on the 17th? 17th, we have the Christmas program and social, so uh, that's when our kids, um, honestly, that's probably one of the busiest Sabbaths that we have here because the kids, they come in here, and um, I, t I tell you what, it's a, it's a really good time. If um, you're wondering what it's like, um, just look at the video from last year, mm -hmm. and um, what we did last year was nothing in comparison to what's going to happen this year, so please come out, and then after that, there's going to be a social, so that means a little bit of Fun and food, so I know Amen. you like food, so come on out next week and have a little bit of food here with us. Amen, yes, and that starts at 5 o'clock right here in the sanctuaries where the Christmas program is going to be, so we want you to be here at 5 and help, help support and celebrate our kids. They worked hard to make this happen, and they're even going to be practicing today, I know, together, so beautiful. All right, we have two prayer requests that I want to mention now and explain a little bit, and then later our elder, Merrick Brown, is going to be praying over them. So our first one is Sean Allen. I'm not sure how many of you know her, but her mother, Betty, passed away just before Thanksgiving. And so next Sabbath, they're going to be having a memorial service um, at 11 a.m. at Common Wages Funeral Home in Snellville. So if you know Sean, if you shoot her a text, if you give her a call, just let her know, hey, we love you. We're praying for you. We're thinking about you. She would really appreciate it. And if you want to be present, I know it's Sabbath morning. Um, they would appreciate your presence as well. So the Allen family is one, and then the second is the Angio family. And the Angio family is near and dear to my heart. I spent time in the hospital with their little ones this week. Um, they have a 19-month-old and an almost three-year-old girl, both in the hospital with pneumonia. Um, their three-year-old is making progress, which is a really big blessing. We're excited. And their 19-month-old is finally making progress. Um, we're praying because she has a breathing tube, chest tube, feeding tube, has had a blood transfusion, has a severe lung infection. So I was there when they took the x-ray, and the x-ray turned from all white on her lungs, and we started seeing a little bit of black shining through, which means the fluid's going down, and the infection's going to get a little better. So the reports from the doctor are going in the right direction, but we need your prayers to keep them going in the right direction. She's still in critical condition, and the family needs our prayers. So we will definitely pray over them later during our prayer time, and I um, want to invite you to do that during the week as well. All right, we have some birthdays. Whose birthday are we celebrating from this past week, Cliff? All right, we, on the 4th of December, we had Marcus Jack the Jr. Uh, on December the 5th, we had Al Bernard and Ariel Walters. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> December the 6th, you had Shaham Abraham, um, Nicole Hunter, Niatria. Natira, I Natira. think. Natira. Natira. Wilkes. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. That's but God knows. Yep. Um, December the 9th, we had Fiona Cameron. And we had Sophia Lynn on December the 7th. And then today is the 10th. Today tenth. is the 10th. The tenth. So we have is it? Janet Ungadi. Ungadi. So uh, December th uh, the 10th was Janet Ungadi. So happy birthday. Happy Sabbath birthday to you. Yes, happy birthday to each of you. I know I have a friend who has a birthday. My dad has a birthday today. Happy birthday, Dad. He's tuning in. So it's very exciting that God blesses us with another year of life. We're not guaranteed it, right? And so we see God's blessing in this, and it's, it's wonderful. 
All right, I see some more people walking in. I see some more people are tuning in on vMix. We're excited. Um, let's see, who do we have in-house? I think I see Beatrice. Good morning. How are you? And is it, is it Lillian? Yay! Names are hard. It's good to be able to recognize people for who they are. Amen. Uh, we have the Robinsons helping out back there. We have the Dunkleys who've just made it in the house. We're so glad you're here. So I see the time, and I'm ready to worship. Are you ready to worship? A actually, no. We have well, actually we have a special guest in here. Um, who we got? Actually, actually, my wife she came back from um, Haiti. She was in Haiti for three weeks. Uh, so God. Uh, granted her traveling mercy. And um, one thing, is, as I was coming in today, uh, there was a car that had stopped and asked me, it was about 10 o'clock, 9, mm -hmm. 9.45, and asked, what time does the what time does th um, church start? And I didn't want to tell him 12 because he might have went home and never come back. But uh, we, actually, he actually, we actually sat there and talked for about 45 minutes. Wow. Um, just talking about just, you know, the goodness of God and um, Patrick Washington, Patrick Washington, hey, I see him back there, and um, God, this guy right here, man, he has, a, he has a story, and I'm glad that he actually came here, he said he stopped by here all the time, he goes right, goes past it all the time, and God asked, God told him to come here today, Beautiful. and um, I'm glad that I was out there to talk to him, so that way he, he's here. Amen, thank you for letting God use you, thank you for staying and being a part, we're glad you're worshiping with us, so on that note, Let's worship. Amen. Happy Sabbath, Church. Happy Sabbath, Church. I know it looks very different up here. And we're wondering what's going on. But today we're having what we call a unplugged Sabbath, where we strip it all the way down to just us, the keyboards, you and God, and we give him spontaneous worship. And we ask that you join us online and join us as we give God our worship, just in a different way today. Let us pray. Father, I want to thank you so much for your Sabbath. Thank you for bringing us into your courts of worship. Lord, as we give ourselves to you, I pray that you accept our worship as a living sacrifice unto you. Thank you for all that you have done for us, in us, and through us this week. And I pray that you'll continue to be with our worship today. In Jesus' name. Thank you. 
we offer up this praise and tune. As we offer up this praise and as we offer up this, as we offer up. a story. We all have a story that in some, some ways leads to brokenness. At some points there are peaks, at some points there are valleys, and I'm, I'm so glad that the God we serve is with us through it all. Whether we are up on a mountaintop or we are down in a valley, we know that all we have to do is say, my God, my God, and He is there. We serve a wonderful God that we are here to give praises to today. As it comes to the Christmas season, this is where the world decides that they're gonna remember that Jesus came to this earth as a child. And, and so we'll celebrate, we'll celebrate and we'll say, you know, we're here to adore you, God. We're here to give praises to you. We're here to lift up your name. Can anyone make that statement today? God, I'm here to lift up your name, amen. As we sing, my hope is that you can join in with us and give God the praise. Let your words, your music, your song be a sweet incense that is flowing ever up toward heaven. Amen.
Amen, amen. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. We give you all the glory. Amen. It's a wonderful thing this morning that we, this afternoon, that we can be here to worship the Alpha and the Omega. Amen. The beginning and the end. The one who is the foundation of our faith. Thanks be to God for his blessings and for every opportunity that we get each and every Sabbath that we can be here to worship the Alpha and the Omega. So it's prayer time, and um, I was thinking about it this week. We are actually, you realize that we are at the end of the year? Wow, I was amazed. I mean, where has 2022 gone? I thought, we, I thought we just started the year 2022, and now we are at the end of the year. I remember growing up, I, I, you know, some of you can relate. Time used to go by so slowly, right? You remember back in the day, you used to look for, I mean, from January, February, you used to be longing for Christmas. And it would take so long. And it seems as if, as we get older, the time goes by quickly, you know. And so, typically, I know that for, I know for me, I know for us, uh, this is a time that many of us used to reflect on what has happened this year. Uh, for some of us, we have had a good year. Uh, some people have had not, a not so good year. And uh, perhaps this year you got a promotion. You know, perhaps this year God has moved in your life in in marvelous, wonderful ways. I know here at Stone Mountain Church, uh, we've, we've lost a couple people maybe um, in, in, in the journey as, as we've journeyed through 2022. And um, I just want to encourage us in our reflection as we look forward to the year 2023, right, that we examine ourselves and, and, and see where in terms of our priorities. Where has God been for you in your priority? I, I, I know for us, you know, many people say I have to work, I got to provide for my family, I have to, I have all these different things, right, that we have to do and everything. Where is God in terms of our resolutions? You know, I, I was reading uh, this week, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, and it says, seek first the kingdom of God, right, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. So I just want to encourage us as we make those New Year's resolutions that God be at the very top of our list. And as in your reflection this, this, you know, at this time, if you realize, you know, I haven't been serving the Lord, I haven't been worshiping the Lord, I haven't been proclaiming God in my life as he wants me to. He hasn't really been the first priority in my life. I just want to encourage us to put him first because he, he says, right, this, if you put me first, Everything else that we pray for, everything else that we aspire, we aspire to be, he will take care of us, take care of it if we put him first. Amen? And so this, this afternoon, we want to pray. Uh, you know, I, I was thinking about this week, and, uh, you know, there are different things going on in our church. And, you know, the Holy Spirit reminded me that, listen, I have, God has the final word. He has the final say in every situation. Do you believe that? God has the final say. I don't, know, I don't care what the doctors say. And I respect doctors, right? I respect scientists. I respect all these different people. But at the end of the day, God has the final say in each and every situation. Amen? He does. Do you believe that? Yes, he does. And so that is why as, as, as people of God, we pray. Because when the doctors tell us no, when the situation seems hopeless, we go to God in prayer, and I know that our church, the Stone Mountain Seventh-day Adventist Church, is a praying church. And so we want to go to God in prayer 
this afternoon. We have some, some books. Uh, I know that Pastor Top mentioned this uh, earlier this, this morning that we want to keep in prayer. Of course, uh, we want to mention uh, Sean Allen has lost her mother. And so we want to keep her in prayer. The, the Angio family, uh, they have two young children that we need to be keeping on our list. Of course, we have Sister Yvonne Bell. Amen. We want to be keeping Sister Bell in prayer. And uh, one of our deacons here at Stone Mountain Church, he had a minor surgery yesterday, uh, uh, Brother Alan Little. And so we want to be keeping him in prayer also. Uh, in a special way, uh, the Gordon family, uh, their son, uh, JT. I'm not going to get into details of the situation. Just want to keep him in, in prayer. So we're going to go to God in prayer uh, this afternoon. Want to kneel as much as we can in the position where you are as we pray today as we go to our God. Father, we come this afternoon, dear God. We know, O oh oh God, that you are the, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending of all things, dear God. And so this afternoon, as we are here, we just want to lift you up. We just want to magnify you and give you thanks for all of your grace, all of your blessings that you, have, you continually extend to us, dear God. Oh God, you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be exalted, oh God, because you have called us out of darkness into your marvelous light. And so this afternoon, dear God, we just want to thank you. We just want to magnify you for your grace and for your blessings that you continue to extend unto us, dear God. Father, as, as your servant comes this afternoon, dear Lord, I ask that you forgive me of my shortcomings, dear Lord, as I intercede on behalf of your people, dear Lord. I pray, O oh Lord, that you continue to fill me with your Holy Spirit, that you continue to strengthen my faith, dear Lord, so that I will be an encouragement to each and every person who I come in contact with, dear God. Father, in a special way, we just want to pray for this church. Lord, we just want to give you thanks and praise for all the things that you have done in this year, in 2022. You have been blessing us as a body, dear God. And we just want to magnify you and give you thanks for all of those blessings that you extend unto us, dear Lord. Father, as a people, Lord, we recognize that as the year 2022 draws to a close, that we are one year closer, believe it or not, to the second coming of Jesus Christ. And so, Father, we want to be about the, your business, dear Lord. Father, perhaps this year we haven't been always faithful when it comes to returning our tithe or offering or, or be in some service capacity in this church. Father, help us to recognize that being a part of your family, this is the greatest blessing ever that we could ever have to participate in this fellowship, dear Lord. So, Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit will move upon our hearts, that in 2023 and onwards, that we will commit ourselves to, to serving in some, some capacity in your church, dear God, because, Lord, you have gifted all of us in some way, dear Lord. So help us, Lord, that we will be about your business, dear Lord. Father, we continue to pray for the leadership of this church, uh, uh, Pastor Tob. We pray for the elders, the ministry leaders, dear God. Just, just be with us in a special way. Uh, continue to use us to be a blessing, dear Father, in, in, your, in, in an awesome way. Lord, we want to bring some names before you this afternoon, dear Lord. In a special way, we pray for Sean Allen as she mourns, mourns the loss of her mom at this time, dear God. The Angio family, you know, you see their kids, dear Lord, are in the hospital. And so, Father, we recognize, Lord, that you are the great physician. You are the great healer, dear Lord. So we ask that you'll reach out in a special way. Uh, Sister Yvonne Bell, Lord, we have been praying all year for her. And, Lord, we're not going to stop. We are not going to stop praying, dear Lord. Because, Lord, we know that you have the final word in each and every situation, dear God. Father, we pray this afternoon for our brother, Alan Little. Father, you know his commitment to this church, his commitment to you. We pray that you'll continue to give him recovery. Lord, we pray for the Gordon family in a special way. Lord, we know they are prayer warriors, dear Lord. And so, Father, we just want to put them to you at this time. Lord, you, you know the situation with JT, dear Lord. And so we ask that you'll intervene in a special way, as only you can, dear God. That you'll heal and restore, Lord. 
Father, we look forward to your second coming, dear God. Help us, Lord, that our desire as a community, that we'll become more and more and more like Jesus, dear God. Father, we pray that you'll deliver us always from the evil one. Lord, you know each and every person here. You know each and every situation that's going on here. I pray that you'll straighten our faith and our hold and our trust in you, dear God. We thank you in advance for all the things that you're going to be doing for us. Father, we pray. We ask all these things today in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, I started speaking today, this morning, about us all having some kind of story. And the one common theme, no matter whether we are in that hill or valley, whether we're broken, whether we're at a point of restoration, the, the one common theme that is in everybody's story is God. God is. I need say no more, God is but I will. God is love. The very definition of love. He loves us so much that this is hard to comprehend, but he literally sacrificed his only son. He gave up his only son because he loved us so much so that we could be saved. The God we serve, depending on our situation, perhaps will present as a God of peace. Maybe there's a storm in your life, a situation that you cannot overcome, but you know that with Jesus, anything is possible. Think about the time that the disciples were in the boat, right? And there was a huge storm coming and they were frightened, they were scared. They woke up Jesus, he was calm. How could he be calm at a time like that? Because he has a peace that passes all understanding. It trumps science. He can literally say to the wind and waves, peace, be still. So what is a problem for him? What is the problem that you're dealing with right now for a God like that? We serve a God who gives us joy. He lets us come into his presence and in his presence we find joy, amen? The fullness of joy. And we serve a God that does all of that for us when we do not deserve it. He gives us grace, amen? We're going to sing about that grace right now. Thank you, God, for your grace. I needed your grace more than I thought I ever would. You forgave more than I thought you ever
Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? All right. Good to be with you in the house of the Lord. May Jesus make room in our hearts. Amen. You did a beautiful job on the keys, a beautiful job singing. Thank you to each one serving today. Um, you see me up here. I'm not with my headset. I'm not with my tablet, and that's because I am not preaching Today we have a guest speaker I'm really excited about. I do want to give you an update really quick, um, and the reminders that we usually do. Um, first, get in your word, get in the Bible. You're not going to regret it. Open up an app, open up a paper Bible, get in your one-year Bible. Doesn't matter where you start, doesn't matter how you start, who you start with, but start. Get in God's word. Let Him speak to you. I, I was talking to people, two different people this week, two different conversations, and they said, "I just don't hear from God. God just never speaks." And one of the ways that God speaks to us, speaks to us, is through his word. That's how he speaks. Sometimes we do get that still small voice, but sometimes it's tapping open or flipping open and saying, God, what do you have for me today in your word? And that speaks into my life. That speaks into our hearts as well, okay? So get in the word. Also, life groups. We just had a new life group start. We're going to feature it soon. I'm really excited about it. It's a couple's life group. And we, we need something. For our couples, amen. Two couples believe so, amen. Cool. We're gonna we're gonna ramp up that number. I believe in it. All right. So, the third thing is to invite you to keep praying. We are still in the pastoral search process. 
So we still are looking for that senior pastor, and we need your prayers as we continue that process. But today, we have a guest speaker, a friend of mine. Um, as I looked at the schedule, I said, man, I really want to have my friend come and just bless us with a word. And so Sean Brooks is from the uh, Atlanta All Nations Church, and uh, he's been here before. Some of you may know him. Uh, he was here pre-COVID, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, pre-COVID. And uh, he's awesome, okay? I'm a little biased. He's my friend. But he's pretty awesome. Uh, he pastored previously in Jamaica. He's pastored here in the States. He's pastored in multiple districts in the Georgia Cumberland uh, Conference. He has his demon, not a demon, but a doctoral of ministry, a demon. Uh, and um, he uh, got that in family ministry. It's his passion. And one of the things that I think is super cool that most people may not know about him, especially y'all, is that he is Possibilities Ministry Coordinator for the conference. And you're like, what is Possibilities Ministry? I'm so glad you asked. Uh, we know it as Disabilities Ministry, right? But I love what Sean did. He flipped it on and said, he said, we focus so much on the disability, but what about all that's possible? What about all that can be done? What about all that each person with a disability can do? Amen? So he's doing Possibility Ministry for the conference. It's really cool. So he enjoys basketball. He's super tall. You'll see that soon. He enjoys chess, which takes some kind of amazing level of intelligence, so I, I uh, salute you. And he likes to mess around on the keys, which I haven't heard yet, but now that I know, I'm make sure there's a time for the, and a place for that to happen. So before I uh, invite him up, I'd like to have a prayer over him as he is our speaker for today, so if you'll join me with that. Father, thank you so much for having Sean come. Thank you for his passion for your word, for his passion for the gospel, and just loving people. Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit will fill him, that you'll give him your words, that you'll give him courage and, and boldness to speak truth, and that we will have hearts to receive what you speak through him today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, the pulpit's yours. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Let me say that again. Happy Sabbath, everyone. God is good. Oh, I need to, need to shout it as if you mean it. God is good all the time. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's always good to come and worship and dwell in the house of the Lord. So I want to take the time as well to, to welcome each person here as we worship our Lord in spirit and in truth. I also would like to just acknowledge uh, Pastor Aubrey, good friend of mine as well, uh, someone whom I respect very uh, deeply. She is passionate about the kingdom of God. She's passionate about God's people, and she loves the Lord with all her heart. So I just want to say thank you, Pastor Aubrey, for inviting me to come and speak to the Stone Mountain family today. I, I'm also happy that I'm here, I joined with my family. So my wife and children and mother-in-law, they're here. I'm just gonna ask them to just stand or wave, whichever one you wanna. All right, all right, so, so I'm glad they're here. Uh, I don't know about you, but the singing was amazing. Praise be to God. When I get to heaven, I'll join them in singing. But for now, I will commend them, and I will just hum in my heart for them and with them. God is good. So, today we're going to look at a topic that has been running with a theme that you have, Tis the Season. Well... I like to speak on the topic, tis the season to be like Joseph. And by the way, thank you for playing on the keyboard. I, I admire the keyboard. I admire the piano as well. Uh, I'm, when I said I'm tinkering, I'm just trying to. I'm learning. I'm just learning the art. So when I get to heaven, I'll perfect it. But I enjoy the music. Tis the season to be like Joseph. You can turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 1. Verses 18 to 21. We'll read it, and then I'll pray. The Bible says, Now 
The birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Let us pray, Lord, even now, as we open your word, we pray, Lord, that you'll speak to us in a mighty way. Lord, paint us a picture of what you'd like us to be and allow your Holy Spirit to tabernacle within each heart today. In Christ's name, amen. Saints, as we near the Christmas holidays, you will hear the story of Jesus' birth from the pulpit. You will hear the story of Mary as her name is forever intertwined or entwined in the Christmas narrative and is preached regularly from the pulpit. When you think of Mary, her name elicits tender sentiments of a mother's love and affection for her newborn. But I want to say, saints, there is a name that is often overlooked in the Christmas narrative. Another name that is not mentioned as frequently, but is extremely important to this narrative. So I hope today I can do some justice in acknowledging this role, this prominent figure plays in scripture. And I speak of none other than Joseph, the father of Jesus. There are two attributes of Joseph that keeps popping up through the narrative, and you will hear me speak of them quite often. One, Joseph possessed humility, and two, he possessed dedication. Humility and what? You're with me. And we'll get to their relevance and meaning shortly. Joseph, you see, provides a clear picture as to how we ought to live in this world. So if you can't remember humility and dedication, just think of HD, acronym for short, HD. Uh, you could say that's high definition, but, but, but we're looking at humility and dedication. Now, I did not have much experience at carpentry growing up. In high school, we had woodworks class where we did some simple designs. However, I was fortunate to see some carpenters busy at work while pastoring in Jamaica. Oftentimes, they worked alone unless they worked with a team or with a company. And one of the things you'll notice with carpenters is that they mostly work in silence. You see, as they manipulate the wood, and shape it to precision, their focus is on making sure everything is just right. Their tools are usually sharp, and their margin forever slim, so their minds are riveted upon getting it right. Their ability to work in silence, saints, can be deafening for some, but a symphony for others. Joseph in scripture, like his trade bespeaks, was a quiet man. And I've searched, and you can search, I've searched and I've not found a single word said by this man. I believe he fell in line with the pattern of several men in society, the silent or quiet type. And this is a type that can drive some women crazy. But saints, if you can read the body language and actions of a quiet man, you may best appreciate his inner world. Now, the trade of a carpenter in Joseph's time was not the most sought after work, especially being a carpenter in a provincial village like Nazareth. It was a very humble position which turned in a low salary. Nothing is mentioned of Joseph's early life in scripture. And we can only speculate that he may have been married before and his previous wife may have passed away, as is the reference made to Jesus' brothers and sisters in Luke 8 and verse 19 and Matthew 12, verse 46. But we don't know how many, if any, of those brothers and sisters were Mary's children after Christ's birth. What we do know, 
however, was that this quiet, unassuming carpenter was pledged to be married to Mary. And according to the Eastern Bible Dictionary, to be espoused or betrothed meant that after a legal exchange of goods or valuables between the parents, there would be a time as much as a year before they were married. During that betrothal, the, the law saw them as husband and wife, and the only way to get out of it was through a divorce. To cheat on a partner during the betrothal state was seen as adultery. So Joseph was engaged to marry, to, to Mary, and he was apparently looking forward to the union until Mary gave an announcement. Maybe one day she just jumped up with some exciting news. Joseph, I have great news for you. Joseph, I can't wait to tell you. What is it, honey? I'm pregnant. Joseph, isn't this good news? Say what? Uh, come again, Mary. What are you? I'm pregnant. And who are you pregnant for? <laughs> no, 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 you don't get it, Joseph. Uh, I, I, I'm still a virgin. Uh-huh. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Keep going. Joseph, I've never known a man. Mm-hmm. Keep going now. But you see, there was this angel named Gabriel, so he's named Gabriel, eh? I got you now. No, 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 listen, there's an angel. He came and he told me, I'm going to have a child, really? And his name shall be Jesus, and he will be the Messiah, right? Joseph, you don't believe me, do you? Hmm. Not by the look on your face, Joseph. Now, I want you to pause here, saints. One of the worst emotions to feel is the one of betrayal. To hear those words coming from the lips of Mary didn't elicit joy in Joseph. It brought out pain, and pain of the worst kind. Yet the way Joseph deals with his grief is commendable. He deals with it with all or in all humility. According to the Holman Illustrated Bible Dictionary, humility is a personal quality of being free from arrogance and pride and having an accurate estimate of one's worth. And let me add an accurate estimate of the worth of others. Even in this time of feeling that he was betrayed or thinking he was betrayed, Joseph still had a high estimate of Mary's worth. Nowhere do we hear him shouting at her and verbally or physically abusing her. Hear me out. At this point, he really thought she cheated on him. Yet we don't hear of him assaulting her and giving her a smackdown. I've personally listened to men share what they would do if they found their partner was cheating. But we don't read about him searching for a weapon. He doesn't go back to his carpentry shop to get some weapon there. This could have been a violent encounter, a scene of domestic abuse, but we read nothing of this sort. Joseph simply holds his tongue. He holds his peace. And like a carpenter in the workshop, he goes into quiet mode. But you have to watch his actions. For actions speak louder than words. The Bible says, verse 19, he did not want to make her a public example. He did not want to embarrass her. Now please get it. Joseph was hurting, y'all. And you better believe that he felt it. But instead of seeking vengeance, Instead of getting back at her, instead of cheating with someone else, instead of sharing this news or gossip to everyone in town, he retreated from her presence to think and to meditate, to ponder his next move. And so he decided he would divorce her without fanfare and depart from her life in peace. I will divorce her, but I will not destroy her. Joseph clearly saw the need to show respect even when it would appear that respect wasn't being returned. 
If this was a Pharisee, and we do have some Pharisees, not in Stone Mountain Church, but if this was a Pharisee, Mary would have been stoned to death or banished, but we can surely know she would have been hated because the whole world would have known her business. Possibly later that night as a carpenter wrestled in his sleep, pondering if he was doing the right thing, an angel appeared in a dream. And in this I'm glad, saints. I'm glad that God will not leave his people in ignorance. I'm glad that he hears and comforts the brokenhearted. I'm glad that it doesn't matter how hot the pain may feel, God is able to soothe the broken heart and mend the wounded spirit. And God reached out to this broken vessel. But note, however, at what point the angel appeared. It wasn't earlier while Joseph was talking to Mary because that would have been the best time. Thank you for telling me. Before the fact, thank you. Because I, I wouldn't have walked away from Mary being so concerned. But God revealed it to him after. You see, saints, God was showing us the character of this man. This was a test of character. Joseph could have hurt Mary with his words. He could have physically assaulted her, but had Joseph hurt Mary, please listen to me now, had Joseph hurt Mary, he would have been hurting Jesus. Let us sink in. Had Joseph hurt Mary, he would have been hurting Jesus. We have to be careful what we say or what we do because what we do to each other, we're actually doing to the Son of Man as well. Blessed is a man that can be angry, or man or woman that can be angry and sin not, according to Ephesians 4, verse 26. Now we can see why the Heavenly Father may, may have chosen uh, Joseph to, to be the earthly father here of Jesus. Joseph's humility, friends, never left him. When Jesus was 12, we read about how they forgot him in Jerusalem, thinking he was with them in Luke chapter 2, verse 41 to 50. When they eventually found him, Mary said, Jesus, what have you done to us? We've been searching anxiously for you. Now, saints, if, there, if these were um, <clears throat> Jamaican parents... <laughs> or Haitian parents, or Trinidadian, or Dadian, Trinidadian parents, or Bayesian parents, Caribbean parents, you get the picture. There wouldn't be any question, where are you? Once they would have found uh, Jesus, let me just say things, um, some of you know what I'm talking about. If you come one hour late sometimes, Two hours late, and you don't have a good excuse. Three hours late, there's no conversation there. Uh, some dust is going to fly. And the thing is, this could have been a different scene right here. When they saw Jesus and they came and instead of a conversation, something else would have been happening right there. It doesn't matter who would have seen. Saints, you don't hear Joseph. He doesn't scream at his son. He is just relieved he has found him. And he ponders the words of Jesus. Did you not know I must be about my father's business? Saints, I want you to take a page out of Joseph's book when it comes to parenting. We must not be ruled by our temper. Your children are little people who will become big people to you by God. Treat them with respect and love. Take a page out of Joseph's book because I can guarantee you there are some parents who would not even give the child an opportunity to speak. I leave it there. I, I need to hopefully one day be invited to the Stone Mountain again. Amen. <laughs> so what of the second major attribute? Second major attribute, dedication. According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, dedication is seen as self-sacrificing devotion 
and loyalty. Self-sacrifice and devotion and loyalty. When God told Joseph to take Mary as his wife in verse 24, where God you know, gave that command to, to take her, immediately Joseph took Mary as his wife. You see, Joseph was a man of few words, yet he's a man of conviction and action. So if God says it, I believe it. Joseph was quick to listen and quick to obey. Now, God did not have to arm wrestle Joseph for him to do his will. Once Joseph understood his mission, he was going to do it. Saints, when you know the way, the truth, and the life, follow him. For Joseph, moving on with Mary and this child, meant that he would be ridiculed until thy kingdom come. His friends would constantly tease him. And if he was in Jamaica, they would say, man, you have a jacket. <laughs> Let me break that down. An illegitimate child. He would be the butt of all the jokes wherever he would roam in Nazareth. And this wasn't what he wanted in life. But he sucked it up and moved ahead anyway because he was dedicated to the task. You see, once a job is agreed upon, a good carpenter, notice I said good because Jesus oftentimes uses this adjective in describing himself. He said a good shepherd because there are bad shepherds and there are bad carpenters. So a good carpenter, once they have a job, will go and get it done. A good carpenter will go all out. Since it was a joy for my wife and I early in our marriage to ask a carpenter to make a dining room table for us. You see, we wanted it oval in design with a glass centerpiece and pedestal legs. It was the first time I'd ordered something to be constructed, and I, for one, was excited. I wondered, however, if, if we asked too much of him. Because it was a little out of the way, a little different in design. But he accepted it nonetheless. And I would drive by at different times, glimpsing into the shop scene where it was in, in, in its development. Because there's a pride in me. And through sweat and blood, eventually the carpenter produced the work. And though I and my wife admired this masterpiece... When I looked at his eyes, he admired it more because he designed it. You see, a good carpenter is always dedicated to finishing the task. A good carpenter is always dedicated to finishing the task. Joseph was going to be the best father he could for this child. And his fatherly instincts began to kick in. He must provide security, and he would do all to protect baby Jesus. So when he made his way to Bethlehem to pay the taxes, he did not leave Mary behind. He brought her with him. Could it be that Joseph didn't trust Mary with his own relatives? If he had a hard time believing Mary, don't you think they would have a hard time as well? And he didn't trust them. He didn't trust her with them. He said, you got to come with me. When Herod wanted to kill Jesus, he took him and fled to Egypt as a refugee. Joseph left everything and everyone he knew to be a refugee in a strange land. He chose to be a refugee for our Lord. Now, not any, I hope no one here, but some of us are against refugees. I remind you that our Savior was also a refugee. Saints, it's not easy to be dedicated to Jesus. For some of us, we believe that when we have Jesus, everything will be all right. There'll be no more troubles and no more complaints, no more heartaches, because we have Jesus. Joseph 
as Jesus was growing up beside him, may have said to himself, I have the son. He's beside me. But the devil may have tormented him with the thought, well, if you have the son, why are you still working minimum wage? Joseph may have said, I have the son, but I'm still living in poverty. I have the son, but I'm still struggling under oppression with my people. I have the son, but I'm still dealing and battling ill health. The physician didn't give me a good prognosis. I have the son, but I may still go to the grave. The devil can discourage us with thoughts like that. Saints, just because you're in close proximity with Jesus doesn't mean everything will go all right in this life. Just because you're in close proximity, just because you have a deep walk with Jesus, doesn't mean you won't go through trials in this world. But we need to flip things around and place things in its right perspective. In all things, we're able to give thanks because we have the Son. So reverse that order. Joseph, in quiet mode, may have responded to the devil. It's true, I'm working minimum wage, but I have the Son of God beside me. I'm living in poverty, but I have the Son. I'm struggling under oppression with my people, but I have the Son. I'm dealing with ill health, but I have the Son of God. I may still go to the grave, but I have the son, and even if I should die, one day my son will come back again with a mighty shout. I will hear his voice and rise up to meet him in the air. You can take this world, but give me Jesus. I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. I'd rather be his than have riches untold. I've got Jesus in my life. I have more than enough. Allow me but a few more words here. By the time Jesus was baptized at 30, Joseph had already died. Joseph was a lowly carpenter in Nazareth. But Jesus, at the age of 12, was already a mighty philosopher, confounding the wise men, confounding the scribes and the Pharisees in Jerusalem. Yet Jesus, the Son of God, Honored by, honored his earthly father by becoming a carpenter by trade as well. Now, no parent ought to force their child into being something or someone they're not. So it's noteworthy when a child walks in the footsteps of his or her parent. Jesus honored Joseph by, by choosing to be like him. And choosing to live like him with humility and dedication. By diligently helping his dad lift the heavy furniture and understanding the dynamic intricacies of carving wood, he honored his earthly father in this manner until his heavenly father said, Time for your public ministry. And Jesus learned a thing or two from his quiet carpenter father. He learned humility. When his mom confronted him at 12 in the temple and said, Jesus, you got to come home. Jesus humbly followed his parents home. He did not have to. He could have said, listen, I'm, I'm smarter than you guys. I am bigger than that little place. In I belong here with the top scholars. Jesus humbly went with them. For 18 years, Jesus went into quiet mode, stealth mode. We don't read anything about him, but his actions speaks volumes. Like his father, he worked in silence in the wood shop, carefully perfecting his trade. When his public ministry began, his humility was on full display. They would tease him and call him that illegitimate child. And there are many names that are used for that description. And they would taunt him. 
Yet never once did he respond in kind and insult them. He took it like his father with humility. When they slapped him in the face and cried out, who hit you? He did not strike back. He simply went into quiet mode. In Isaiah 53 and verse 7, Isaiah says it best. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he what? Opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before its shearers is what? Silent. So he opened not his mouth in the footsteps of his earthly father. Secondly, throughout his life, Jesus was dedicated to the task at hand. Upon his baptism at 30, when his public ministry began, we see his dedication on full display. He was completely dedicated to his disciples. He did not abandon them. In fact, when the soldiers came in the garden, Jesus stepped up and said, here I am. You came for me. Leave them alone. Here I am. I'm dedicated to them. I'm here to provide security for them. On the cross, with his nails, with the nails piercing his hands and feet, Jesus looked around and noticed his mother. And he remembered how dedicated his father was in ensuring Mary's safety and protection. So Jesus honors his father and says, John, look, behold your mother. Mommy, look, look at John. He's going to take care of you. You see, like his father, he's making sure Mary is looked after. He's dedicated to his mother. And Jesus is dedicated to his heavenly father. In Gethsemane, Jesus asks, Father, is it possible that this cup can be lifted from me? This job is a bit heavy. My, my, my divine nature is repulsed at the thought of the way the sins of the world being rested upon me. And my humanity is flinching when I'm thinking about the nails coming into my hands and my feet and the spear going into my side. And I'm thinking about the thorns that are going to pierce my temple. I don't want to do it. I don't feel like I can handle it. But then Jesus remembers that as a carpenter, a good carpenter starts a job, he has to finish it. So he says, not my will. But your will be done. I have this job. I have to finish it. And when he hung on the cross, Jesus said something that sometimes we miss. Jesus said, it is what? It is finished. It means that it is perfect. It's marked by the highest quality consummate workmanship or finished workmanship. Uh, Saints, I want to let you know that's the language of a carpenter. When a carpenter has finished a job and the carpenter takes a look and says, there's nothing more I can do to it. I can't shave it down any further. I can't add or attach anything else to it. There's nothing that can be done. It's a finished product. It is finished. Jesus, like a good carpenter, was looking at his heavenly father and said, my father, there is nothing more I can add to what I've done. No one else can do or replicate what I have done on this cross and in my life. There's nothing anyone can put on. There's nothing anyone can subtract. God, it is finished. It's perfect. It's consummate in its detail. There's nothing more that can be added. The expression of a good carpenter. Where is this carpenter now? He's in heaven, saints, doing a 
quiet work. You can't hear him, but he's working. You can't see him, but he's working. For he says, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. Our humble Lord and Savior has never gone back on his word. What he says he will do, he will do it. And for me, saints, where he bids me, I will go. Saints, in order for us to live like Joseph, we must allow the carpenter up above to work in us. Let the carpenter, Jesus, have a moment with you. Jesus may have to sand you down a little. It's a humbling process. Jesus may have to chip some rough edges off of you. Don't get discouraged. You see, the carpenter knows and sees your potential. One thing about Jesus, he will never discard you. You could come to him chipped. You could come dented. You could have been thrown out as, as garbage. Jesus will take you and he will repair you and make you into something beautiful. Jesus will not scratch you, saints. When Jesus starts something in your life, he brings it to completion. Today, if it is your desire to allow this mighty carpenter in heaven to do and to start this work in you, just raise your hand wherever you are. Amen. And saints, you may be looking online as well. You have a way to reach the pastor and the leaders here and those who are here. If you also are thinking of maybe giving a public commitment to Jesus Christ, you want study, you want, to, you want prayer, but one day you want to enter that pool with Pastor Aubrey and you want to make that declaration to the world that I'm a follower of Jesus, you can, if you're watching online, you can just type it in. I would like to be a part of our next baptism. Or if you're here right now, Pastor Aubrey is good with names. So if you're here and you just want to raise your hand, Pastor Aubrey is going to look and see you, and she has a great memory. Just raise your hand. If it is your desire to say, I want to be a part of the next baptismal service. I want to give my life to Jesus Christ in baptism. I want to start that journey with humility and dedication. This is the day I will start. You can raise your hand or put in the type. This is the day for me. I'm going to pray and allow the team to come on. Let's pray. Lord, even now, as we pause, we thank you, Lord, for this story as found in Joseph. We thank you, Lord, for his life, his faithfulness, and his life of humility. It's an example for us, Lord. There, there are so many places in our lives that we can say, I need to, to, to learn to be calm. I need to, to understand the, the dynamics of, of being dedicated to a task, dedicated to my family, dedicated to the work of God. Even now, Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit will transform and renew us. Thank you for those who have come here this morning to, or today to, to worship you. Thank you for those who are listening online. Even now, God, show up in our hearts. Renew a right spirit within us. And help us to treat each other with love and respect. Jesus, you saw the hands that went up because we want to walk with you. We want you to start that work in us. So, Lord, honor the hands that went up. Honor the lives, Lord, that are bearing testimony that they want you in their lives each and every day. So finish that good work. So when you come again, Lord, we will not be strangers to you, but a part of your finished workmanship. Use that language with us, Lord. It is finished. We want, Lord, you to come quickly. So, Jesus, Stone Mountain joins in 
with John the Revelator and all the saints who are praying today, come quickly. Come quickly, Lord. We love you and we long to see you. In Christ's name, amen. say praise God praise God for his messenger and the message that he brought today truly that was a Holy Spirit inspired message amen? amen I know I was blessed I know I am blessed so we just want to thank God for Pastor Sean Brooks and his ministry and his message that he brought uh, today at Stone Mountain Seventh Day Adventist Church and I just want to say to pastor whenever you're ready just let us know when you're gonna pass by 
Praise God. Praise God. All right. So I'm going to invite the deacons and deaconesses who are here. And uh, it's written in Malachi chapter 3, verse 10 to 12. It says there, bring all the tithes into the storehouse so that there may be enough food in my temple, says God. If you do this, the Lord says, I will open the windows of heaven for you and I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test, says the Lord. Let us pray. Father, what a blessing it has been as we have come together as a Stone Mountain family to worship today, dear God. We thank you so much for your goodness, for your blessings. We thank you so much for health and strength. Uh, that we're in our right minds, dear God, for employment, for jobs. Lord, at this time, we seek to return to you how you have blessed us. Thank you so much for those who continue to support our ministry here at Stone Mountain Church. Father, for those who may not be able to give up this time, I pray, oh God, that you will continue to bless them and guide them and, and provide for them in a special way. We ask that you will bless these offerings, bless the tithe and offering your God and may be used as always. For the proclamation of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Just want to say, uh, I mean, every Sabbath that we come here, we are blessed. And we don't want to keep these blessings to ourselves, right? So we want to be making sure that uh, we're liking these messages and we're sharing these messages so that others can come and taste and see that God is wonderful. Amen? Is God wonderful to you? People are not sure here. All right? God is awesome. God is wonderful. And so we want to be liking these messages and sharing so that others can be blessed by God's word. Amen. Thank you so much. God is good all the time, right? All the time? God is good. Thank you for being a part of worshiping with us online. Thank you for being in person with us. It makes a difference. Um, Sean, thank you so much for your message. May we all be like Joseph. Amen. We'll have a prayer and then you'll be ushered out from the back. So let's bow our heads. Father, thank you so much for this reminder. We need to walk in humility and dedication like Joseph did. God, work in our hearts. We surrender to you. Shape us, chip away at us, sand the rough edges, and make us new and a, a completed, beautiful project. We're a masterpiece that, that you create. So we're yours. We trust you. And it's in Jesus' name that we
just ran from the top of Stone Mountain all the way here. <laughs> you know that's a lie. <laughs> How was your week, you guys? Was it good? I know mine was good. I was a little tired, but I'm good. I am so good. Before we get started, how about we pray? I love praying. Dear Jesus, thank you for this awesome week. Thank you for allowing us to see another day, another Sabbath. Bless us and protect us and help us to do what's right. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, have you guys ever told a lie before? Yes, we've told a lie sometimes in our minds, with our eyes, with our mouth. We've told a lie. And then we tell another lie to cover up that lie. And then another lie to cover up the lie. Like I said, I ran from Stone Mountain. No, I did not. I just ran from right there <laughs> to right here. <laughs> so, that's my lie. But I know a lot of us, we lie, like I said, in different ways. There are no big lies. Some people think they're white lies. Some people think, I don't know what a white lie is and a black lie. I don't know. Some people say they're big lies and little lies. I don't know. Do you think they're big lies and little lies? A lie is a lie. And we're going to find out about that. But you know, God says to us in Proverbs 12, 22, he said, lying lips are abomination unto the Lord. That means he doesn't like the lying lips. But what makes him happy is when we tell the truth. And I told you the truth that I didn't run from Stone Mountain. I just ran from right over there to right here. Okay. So. I have some people that's going to help me tell, talk about a lie and also show us what a lie could look like. Okay? And I hope that we learn something from it. You think you can? Think about it because I think you will. Alrighty? And I am going to go back and run up Stone Mountain. Ready, set? Somebody. Okay. Alrighty, I want to say hello to Danielle Dixon, Bukami, Fumi, Ayo, Ms. Drina misses you, Juliana, and Jaden. You guys, I'm going to call you next week so we can be on video with everybody else, okay? Hi, Aaliyah, I miss you. You guys have been gone for a long time and I miss you. And my other Aaliyah and Madison, I hope you're feeling better, okay? Madison Hawkins, Madison Samuel, and Madison Osborne. All my Madisons! Hello, everybody, and moms and dad. Love you guys. I want to say hi to Jaden and Juliana. I want to say hi to Elijah. I want to say hi to old dad. I want to say hi to my sister. I want to say hi to my Jesus. I want to say hi to grandma. I want to say hi to my mom. Me too. I want to say hi to my mom. I want to say hi to my um, dad. He's in Texas. I want to say hi to Jaden and Juliana. I want to say hi to my auntie named Auntie Miriam. I want to say hi to Ethan. I want to say hi to my mommy. I want to say hi to my dad. I want to say hi to my grandma. I want to say hi to Juliana. Is there such a thing as a big lie or a little lie? Yes. Is there such a thing as a big lie or a small lie? No. Uh, a lie is a lie. What happens when you lie? When you lie, you have to cover up your other lie when people just think that they found out what you did. And then, Shana, tell me a type of lie. Okay. Okay. 
Are there different kinds of lies? No, because if someone tells you not to do something and you do it, and they find out you're in very big trouble, and you, and lies are the same thing. Get rid of sin. Because Jesus died on the cross. Somebody take, name a liar in the Bible. Name a liar in the Bible. Judah. Does it make a difference between what a lie is? It does make a difference because when you lie once and you forget that first lie, then you have to lie a second. And then it keeps on going and going and going, and then soon you just can't hold it. So it does make a difference. Joseph, can you explain to us what we have in front of us? What happens when you lie? Well, this is supposed to show what happens when you lie. And what happens when you lie is that that lie spills into another lie. And when you can't remember that lie, you have to make another lie which spills into another lie. You've shot. 